Hi guys! Welcome to another video! Today I will be showing you how I paint flowing fur. This can be applied to any color of fur, you just need to adjust the actual paint that you use. While I do use oil paint here, you can totally use these steps with acrylic paint as well. Let's get started! So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to be painting a fur block that isn't attached to anything, just for demonstrative purposes. My inspiration was a little chunk of bison beard hair. <laughs> Although I didn't follow any direct references for this particular demonstration, I have been painting fur for years and have a pretty good feel for it, but I highly recommend that you follow a reference, especially if you're first getting started. Fur needs a lot of variation to feel natural, so make sure you look at both photos and real life models if you have them. I had some chunky fur in mine that is soft yet sort of sticks together in clumps, which allows you to play with some fun shadows. Before I start a painting, I always ask myself where the light is coming from and what sort of atmosphere I want to achieve. For this little demo, the light is coming from the top left. The atmosphere will be defined by my usual shadow and highlight tones. I have a tendency to make all of my shadows slightly purple in tone, and my highlights I like to be warm and golden. These are my personal preference, so be sure to experiment to find out the color palette you like. Alright, let's talk in more painting. I usually start with a super light rough sketch of where the main fur chunks will fall before jumping in with the brush. For this demo, I'm going to be painting some basic brown fur, of which I will add some variation in the later steps. I start by grabbing a large-ish brush and mix up a diluted dark tone. Because I'm using oils, I mix some burnt umber in with paint thinner to make a watery mixture that flows nicely but is still dark, and stroke that into the shadows to start building our foundation. References are great here to give you a feel of how the shadows will fall on that fur. While I'm not worried at all about the details at this point, you want to make sure that you're always stroking in the direction that the fur will flow. The next step is going to be adding our middle tone. Essentially my workflow is sketch, dark rough shadows, rough middle tone, rough highlights, let it dry, then work in more refined shadows, fur structure, and highlights, let things dry again, and then finally you can adjust everything with glazes. I mix up a bit of titanium white with burnt umber to make my middle tone, but like I mentioned earlier, you can use whatever colors you like for your fur. Painting blonde tones? Use lighter, more yellow tone colors. Painting blue fur? Use blue. Experiment! So with this middle tone, I essentially fill in all of the blank space. However, if you have very dramatic lighting, I would avoid the space that would have the strongest lighting. But since this little demo doesn't have strong highlights, I just cover the entire empty surface. I felt that I was losing the shape of the fur chunks, so I worked in the shadows again with more burnt umber, working wet into wet, or wet into slightly wet, since painting on unprimed paper makes your oils dry super fast. Side note, don't do this, prime your paper. Make sure you're working with larger brushes at this phase, as you are not yet aiming for detail. I really like working with an angular flat brush for blocking in fur, as you can lay down large areas with the flat side of the brush, while also reaching into some tighter areas with the side or the edge. Working with the middle tone again, flesh out the fur chunks again before we jump into the highlights. Mm -hmm. 
For the highlights, you may be tempted to work with pure white paint right away. Don't do this. It ends up looking super unnatural and too dramatic. Add white to your middle tone to lighten it and eventually build up the highlights, adding more white paint as you go. Again looking at references, stroke in the highlighted chunks of fur with the side or the edge of your angular flat brush. Then build up the highlights even more, mix more white into the paint and stroke that in where the light source is even stronger. At this phase, I bounce back and forth a lot, from highlights to shadows and back again, making small adjustments until things look right. The next step is glazing. Glazing is when you mix a small amount of pigment into a vehicle. In this case, I'm using Liquin by the Winsor & Newton, and I use it to apply thin washes of paint to your painting. This can be used in a ton of ways, like amping up the saturation of a color, adding color variation, deepening shadows, and more. Here I'll be using glazes to add a purple tone to the shadows, and a warm golden tone to the highlights. I'll be making a full glazing tutorial soon, but in the meantime, add a blob of glazing medium to your palette and add a small dab of your paint of choice to the medium. I prefer to use a palette knife to mix the glaze, but feel free to use a brush if you feel more comfortable. The important thing is to ensure that you mix the paint and medium until it's homogenous, nice and even. If you don't, and have bits of unmixed paint within the medium, you run the risk of applying too much pigment to the painting. Mix, 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 until you have that nice homogenous glaze, nice and transparent. Then load up a brush and apply a thin layer to the areas of the painting. The shadows here are receiving an area of a dark purple glaze, so I carefully brush that over the shadowed areas. I find that this adds a richness to the shadows and is so much more interesting than using black. Same goes for the golden glaze. It adds a nice, lovely warmth that is pleasing to look at. So once you've layered on your glaze, let it dry. Don't touch it until it's fully dry, which, thanks to the fast drying nature of the glazing medium, should only be about a day. Then finally, I detail. Grabbing a fine rigger brush, mix up one of your lightest shades. I like to dilute my paint here just enough to let it flow nicely, as thicker paint will appear to skip over the surface, since you'll be using a light hand. Thinner paint will also flow more easily and allow you to create smooth individual hairs.
I mostly add these details in the highlighted area, slightly venturing into the area of the middle tones, but I rarely go over the darkest area with your lightest detailing paint. If I find that the highlights are too stark and dramatic at this point, I'll do another pass with the glazes to bring everything together. Glazes are best done in multiple thin layers, especially when your goal is to adjust the color. For instance, a glaze of red and then blue, or vice versa, of course letting things dry between each layer, will yield more vibrant results than a single glaze layer of purple. But I think this fur looks pretty good. These steps can be applied to any color of fur, so have fun with it. I hope you guys enjoy this fur tutorial and have a chance to give it a go. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.